Reimagining Success, Episode 49. You're listening to Reimagining Success, the podcast where we help you reimagine your future, designing a life and career beyond the nine to five that allows you the freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment that you've been dreaming of. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg. Now, let's get started on those dreams. Hello there, my name is Anna Lundberg. I'm the founder of One Step Outside, author of Leaving the Corporate 9 to 5 and host of the Reimagining Success podcast. Now that is my little introduction that I've been using the last few weeks or even months. And the section of that intro I want to draw your attention to, apart from the podcast, of course, which you're very well aware of since you're listening to me on the podcast, but it's that I said I'm the author of Leaving the Corporate 9 to 5. Now, I have to be fully honest with you, it's taken me some time to think of myself and to put myself forwards as an author. I've always thought of myself as a writer, and being a writer, I think, is sort of easier to get your head around, because writing means that you're writing, so that's easier to say, um, to accept to sort of own. Saying that you're an author um, does feel a bit sort of contrived and arrogant, which is a bit strange because, you know, we don't find ourselves um, feeling boastful when we say that, you know, I'm an accountant or I'm a marketing director, whatever it is. So I don't know why an author should be any different. And uh, supportive people will tell me, will tell you that, you know what, you've published a book. So yes, you are an author. Boom, done. Simple as that. But I have begun to say that, and I have published, in fact, two books, so I am an author. And wouldn't it be nice for you to do the same, to be able to say, in the context of your business, you know, I am the author of this book on my topic of expertise, ta-da, boom, imagine where that puts you in terms of credibility and authority. And it's credibility, building an audience, establishing your authority in a new field that we were talking about over the last few weeks. So do check out those couple of episodes if you haven't listened to those yet. But as I said last week, writing a book, publishing a book, and in fact, self-publishing a book, and I'll talk about that in a moment, is a fantastic way to boost your business and specifically, of course, boost your credibility and so on. But just to take a step back for a moment, I think a lot of us want to be a best-selling author. No, just me? (laughs) I think I grew up thinking, wanting to be a writer, some kind of writer. So I would make up sort of fake journalism pieces. I did a very controversial fake news uh, interview with my dad, (laughs) who was CEO of a company, and I um, wrote some um, pretty scandalous answers to the questions I asked without actually having spoken to him. So shh, not very ethical, but that was one of the things I did. I used whatever it was pre-Windows, the the publisher um, software, whatever that was, to create, you know, little magazines and newsletters at university. Even my friends and I created a little magazine, I think called Fortnite or something, didn't really take off. Um, I joined the Cherwell newspaper at Oxford and so on and so on. So I've always sort of wanted to be a writer. Oh, and I wrote awful sort of teen fiction along the lines of Sweet Valley High and so on, if you know those books, but very ridiculous uh, sort of romantic um, teen high school fiction, very much dreaming of that kind of American dream, the version where um, the blonde twins, I guess, Sweet Valley High, um, get the quarterback uh, asking them out for prom, all that silly stuff. So I did watch a lot of those American films and series. But as I said, I've always wanted to be an author. Um, And I imagine you may have had the same, maybe not, because, you know, we're all different. Some people may have dreamed of being a an artist, a musician, um, a cricket player, who knows what your background is, right? We all have those sort of big drinks. Why, why not a superhero or, or all sorts of other things? Astronaut, I've talked about that before too. But being an author, a lot of us feel like we have a book in us, as it were. And I think, you know, we have some kind of vision, and certainly I had a vision of sitting in a cabin in the woods somewhere, or ideally with an ocean view, you know, writing beautifully handwritten in these beautifully leather-bound books, um, you know, publishing, being on the bestseller list, having piles of books around you, author reading, signing, literary prizes, bestseller lists and all these things, right? And that is sort of a, a shiny, perfect image of what we think success looks like as an author. And I think that's something, first of all, to break down before we even get to, you know, writing a book specifically for business, which I will get to. Um, But I really think it's important to break that dream, that so-called goal apart, take it off down that, take it off from the sort of shelf up there, this beautiful and perfect goal of being a best-selling author, and really examine it, really break it apart, understand what is it about writing a book that appeals to you? What is your objective, right? Because 
for most of us. Maybe it's not realistic to be, and the, the people who always come to mind, you know, are J.K. Rowling, Stephen King, but I mean, there are so many other authors, and um, famous authors, who are doing incredibly well in business and in fiction, right? So non-fiction, fiction. Um, and, uh, and not to say that you can't be that person, but for most of us, our first book is not going to be the bestseller. And also, even if it is, realistically, we're not making necessarily millions. You know, J.K. Rowling has done pretty well for herself and I really admire how she wrote those first books when she had a newborn baby. So who knows how she managed that? She obviously had a very strong vision. This little boy, Harry Potter, sort of came in her vision, her mind, very um, very creatively, but very um, impressively as well, how she was able to write that. But what is it about writing a book that appeals to you? Is it really again, that sort of shiny, superficial, I'm a best-selling author. Is that what appeals? I think for most of us, it's not. So if I think about why I wanted to be a writer and still now, a core part of that is because I wanted to write. So, you know, if your goal is to write, if that's why you want to be an author, then for goodness sake, start writing. And that's something I did, you know, for years I did um, a a writing, um, I I can't remember what it's called now, a journalistic um, programme, two-year course in um, writing for magazine journalism or something like that with the um, NZTJ here in the UK. I did lots of creative writing courses and then between those courses actually didn't really write. So if you think of yourself as a writer, if you want to be a writer, you need to look at your calendar, your day-to-day agenda and you need to write. So, you know, it's very easy to say, oh, I want to be an author, I want to be a best-selling author, but if you're not actually writing anything, that's never going to happen. So look at your diary first of all and see, am I actually spending any time? How much time am I spending on writing? But first of all, if your goal is simply you love writing, start writing. Nobody even needs to see that stuff. However, maybe another goal, a secondary goal could be that you want people to read your writing. And in that case, again, you can do what I did years ago. I started a blog, 2013. Again, very few people reading it initially, and I felt very shy about putting that out there. But uh, over time, you know, I got positive feedback and, and I got more and more confident and, and now you know it's second nature I was publishing up until recently you know new blog post every week and so on so you know if it's important for people to be reading your material then you know start a blog post it's pretty much free um people will start reading it and you can you know start sharing on social and so on the good news is because hardly anyone reads it at the beginning you can sort of play around with it you can build your confidence before hundreds and thousands of people start reading your blog so that's a great thing to do right start writing and start publishing Maybe you dream of, as I did again, having a physical book in your hand. I've written this book, I've published this book. And again, the magic now is that you can actually self-publish. You don't have to wait for that incredible, um, you know, formal publishing contract. Self-publishing, you know, even just, I don't know, five, ten years ago, used to be called vanity publishing. And I remember ooh, a couple of people I know <laughs> who shall remain nameless um, who did self-publish their books and they were so badly written and it was really sort of their very self-indulgent philosophy on life or very sort of polemic piece and you know that's fine if that's what you want to do um but the point is you can absolutely self-publish and there are so-called indie authors um and all sorts of other sort of names I guess for those of us who publish ourselves that's completely feasible um you know even within the indie author self-publishing world you can absolutely be professional you can make a lot of money you can have a very credible platform um of course you can use professional editors proofreaders designers all sorts um so you know don't think that self-publishing is in any way um you know not as powerful not as impressive i guess as having a publishing contract having a publishing contract still, you know, is incredibly appealing. And I would love to have that for at least one of my books in the future. And I think it'd be an interesting experience to have. However, the reality is, again, you know, financially, a publisher, an agent and all these other people involved will take a big chunk of your money. They'll have control of your book. I know one of my friends, his very first book, um, he wanted to bring that out again and, and sell more copies. And because I guess, you know, it hadn't sold as well, perhaps the, the publishing um, house didn't want to do that and they had the rights to it and so on. So that's a horrible situation to be in that you no longer own your creative work. Um, what else? I mean, most uh, publishers, if not, in fact, all of them really now rely on you and expect you to have Um, your own social media following, do your own marketing and so on, right? So that's the same for publishing yourself or having a publisher. So not to say that it's not an incredible feat to have a publisher. And hello, if you're listening, I would love to have my book formally published, but um, don't worry if that's, uh, you know, that's not your only goal, I think. 
And then the final one that I want to really dive into now in the last few minutes is driving your business. So, you know, maybe you feel that actually writing a book, as I said earlier, could potentially establish your credibility and give you a platform and so on. So let's dig into that a little bit deeper. So if your goal is to really boost your business, to bolster your business with this book, there's a couple of different ways in which it can do that, right? So let's take the first most obvious one, making money. So Yes, selling books online can be a revenue stream in itself. It's this famous passive income. You write it, you edit it, you design and so on, you put it out there and then, ta-da, you magically get money coming into your account every month. And yes, that does happen. Um, My friend Serena and I wrote a book, uh, How to Succeed in Your First Job, several years ago, and that is still bringing in, you know, both via um, people reading the Kindle version and people buying paperback around the world, you know, that brings in a nice little sum of money every month. So that's, you know, if we actually pushed it, perhaps it would get even more. Ironically for me, I have the leaving the corporate nine to high five. So I really have bracketed the whole experience of starting your first job and then leaving your job. Um, But both of those books, you know, are, yes, bringing in a little bit of money. However, Again, you're unlikely to be a bestseller with that first book. If, you know, a lot of people do call themselves a bestseller, but usually it's because they've sort of within Amazon been number one for a day on on that particular category. And so that doesn't mean they're making millions from that book, right? So let's be honest about that. Um, So be realistic. You'll have small monthly sales. But you know what? That does add up. It's a great place to start. And if you write more books, again, whether you're writing novels or um, these business books, for example, if you have three books, five books, you know, that adds up and it really has a positive um, uh, echo, I suppose. Um, and uh, and the more books you write, the, the more people you reach and so on, and that will potentially become more substantial. So yes, it can absolutely be a revenue stream in itself. Secondly, of course, a book can be a platform for launching a public speaking career or being featured in the media in other ways, you know, coming on TV or being in a magazine, online, offline, um, or again, speaking at events and so on. If you are the author of this book on this topic of expertise that you have, of course, that sounds much more credible than just being, hey, I'm Anna Lundberg, I want to talk about this topic because, you know, it's a bit fun and and I feel like I know stuff about it. (laughs) That doesn't sound as credible. So if you can say, especially during the launch period, you know, I've just published this, it's hot off the press, and tie that to a really important hook, maybe it's really relevant, it's to do with mental health, which is a big trend, or climate change, or, or who knows what else, right? If it's something that you can really hook onto something that's that's happening right now, that's really key, um, and, and and again, it doesn't have to be a massive um, topic for everybody. It could be a very niche topic for your specific industry, but your book can absolutely be a platform for launching that sort of public speaking, media features, and so on. But of course, if that's the case, you want to be making sure that throughout the book, you're really asserting and inserting, in fact, your credibility, your authority. Um, So, you know, for example, my book, I was sharing the stories with um, interviews with 50 people who've left their books, uh, left their books, left their jobs. We're talking about books all day. Um, And of course, if I just left it as that, people will wonder, okay, but you know, thanks for giving us those stories and then and forget all about me. However, what was important for me is to, of course, assert my authority, share my own story of leaving the corporate nine to five, make it clear that I offer coaching in this area, that I have this group program and so on, um, and really give my guidance and specific support, framing those stories um, while establishing myself as an expert in that area. And in fact, I mentioned my program there, that would be a third option for driving your business. So your book can actually funnel people into a specific program. So again, my book is Leaving the Corporate 9 to 5, stories from people who've done it and how you can too. So it serves a number of um, roles in my business, actually. So specifically, it does then feed into my program. I have a group coaching program called One Step Outside the 9 to 5. It is absolutely the best thing for somebody who's read the book, they're feeling inspired, bit of reassurance. They're like, yes, this is absolutely what I want, what I want to do. They've read a little bit about, you know, other people have similar fears about failure and all the hard work that's going to go into it. But everyone in the book says, go for it. You know, this is incredible. You'll never regret it. And I feel, yes, I want to do it. But how on earth do I get started? So them, they, those uh, readers, it's ideal for them to then, you know, join my Facebook group, um, sign up so I have a video series they can join and then potentially then invest in my group coaching program. So that's a really specific next step. That also means that um, it's sort of part of my uh, product and service package and pyramid, if you will. Um, so 
I have free content, of course. You can listen to my podcast. You can sign up to my email letter, email newsletter. You can join my Facebook group and so on. So that's sort of the base of my pyramid. Then there's quite a low sort of price point. You can, for, you know, less than £10, whatever it is, sometimes cheaper when we do offers and so on, but Kindle, paperback, uh, £7, £9, whatever it is, you can get the book. And that's a specific... Um, piece of of expertise that you can then consume without having to invest hundreds of pounds in coaching and then you have the group program the individual coaching and so on so the book really plays a specific role in that pyramid of services so again just to recap as we wrap up if the um, objective for you is to drive your business then you have a few different specific objectives within that so it can be a revenue stream in itself in which case, again, be realistic about that and make sure you're getting the reach, make sure you're getting lots of reviews on the book and so on. I mean, this is a whole other topic, but really be super clear that that's your objective and probably you'll need to write many books in order to really scale that up. But there's all sorts of guidance um, around, you know, just Google and I'm sure there are book writing coaches and so on who can really help you to make this a revenue stream. Um, in fact, I want to just give a shout out to the creative pen. So Joanna Penn is one of the most successful indie authors. Um, she has a fantastic uh, podcast that I've been following and lots of free and paid for resources and lots of books as well. So Joanna Penn of the creative pen. Um, then a book can be a platform for launching a public speaking career, being featured in the media and so on. And you want to make sure then that you're really asserting your credibility, authority throughout the book. And finally, it can be a piece of the puzzle sort of of that program uh, product pyramids and driving specifically to a paid service such as an online course or a program and so on so those are just a few of the ways in which you can write a book that will actually drive your business again what I'd really love to emphasize is for you to take a step back explore why is it you want to write that book and in this context of course we're talking about publishing a book that's going to drive your business if you just want to write something because you have this really lovely story that you want to tell or you want to um you know write something about your family history or something like that that's going to be more you know a fun thing for you an idea you have or something that will be really lovely for your family to have then absolutely you can do that and and really just enjoy that process and and have that book for your family for your loved ones and for your own sort of um uh well, your own pride, I suppose, and, and your own fulfillment. That's absolutely a very worthy cause, but it's a separate, different kind of objective to have than writing a book to help your business. If you want your book to play an important part in your business, you have to be super clear on what precisely you want to do with that. And then make sure you actually design the book, you structure it with that audience, that objective, that core message, and that really clear next step in mind. So hopefully that was useful. Um, I'd love to talk more about this as a topic, as you can tell, that I'm really passionate about. As ever, if you have any questions, get in touch. You can send me an email at podcast at onestepoutside.com and I look forward to seeing you here next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Reimagining Success with Anna Lundberg. You can find my book, Leaving the Corporate 9 to 5, Stories from People Who've Done It and How You Can Too, in paperback and Kindle format on your local Amazon site. I hope it gives you both inspiration and concrete tips on how you can craft your own alternative career path. Happy reading.